Hello everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. My question that I'd like to start us off with today is, where do you go if there's really bad, terrible weather? And where do you go if there's danger? I think most of us would say that we'd go home, somewhere that we feel is safe. We would go to our shelter. And wild animals have shelters as well, even though they look a little bit different than the shelters that we use. And that's exactly what we're going to be discussing today. So without further ado, let's discuss some animal homes. Animals need homes for the same reason that we need homes. And sometimes we call animal homes shelters. They may look really different from one another, but a lot of times they have the same jobs. Animals use their shelters to avoid danger, perhaps a predator, to avoid bad weather, say an extremely hot summer day or a very cold winter day. They also use their shelters as a place to raise their families and keep their babies healthy. And not every animal builds a shelter. Sometimes animals may steal or borrow shelters from other species. And sometimes animals don't need shelters like an elephant or a rhinoceros. These are really large animals and they can usually do just fine in a little bit of bad weather. So today we are going to focus on the animals that do build or steal shelters. Let's get into it. I'm going to start us off with an animal that many of us can recognize their shelter like that. I'm thinking of birds. Most birds build a shelter called a nest. And now, depending on the type of bird that we are talking about, their nest can look very different and be found in very different places. Most of us picture nests kind of tucked into the branches of trees, right? Lots of animals do create their nests there. They make little woven baskets in the tree branches. Other birds, like woodpeckers, can make their homes in the tree trunk themselves. They drill holes into the tree trunk or telephone poles or even giant saguaro cacti, and they use that as their shelter, as their nest. Other birds use man-made options like barns or underneath bridges. Some birds make nests that look like hanging baskets. Some birds even nest on Antarctic ice sheets. So there's a lot of variety among birds and the types of shelters that they create, but most birds use their nest for one very important reason, to raise their babies. That's where they lay their eggs and where they incubate the nest so that their babies can go big and strong and go off and make nests of their own. Another animal that makes an incredible shelter is a prairie dog. And prairie dogs are a type of ground squirrel that are very well known for their ability to dig. They make very deep burrows that can be more than 10 feet down underground with lots of tunnels and rooms and entrances and exits. The different rooms of their shelters are used for different things to store food, to go to the bathroom, even to raise their babies or to listen for predators. These shelters are incredibly important for prairie dogs because Lots of animals like to make ground squirrels their lunch so they can hide from predators in their burrows. They also can hide from bad weather and raise their babies down there. Now, these burrows are incredibly important for prairie dogs, but they're also important for the environment and for other animals. For the environment, when prairie dogs dig these burrows underground, they allow oxygen and nutrients to travel into the soil which helps plants grow. And then when prairie dogs are done with their burrows or they've moved on, other animals can come in and use their burrows as well. Burrowing owls love to use a prairie dog burrow. So do snakes and foxes and lots of other small animals. Corals are a very interesting example of an animal that builds a shelter. Hard corals are made of teeny tiny little animals called polyps that with the help of some algae build these really large hard structures that the polyps can live inside. 
Now that's great for the pops, right? That gives those tiny little animals a place to live, but corals can grow and grow and with other corals can become a coral reef. The corals themselves are shelters for the polyps, but the coral reefs are shelters for thousands of animals. Everything from small fish, to eels, to sea snakes, to baby sharks, and sometimes even adult sharks. All these different animals rely on the structure of the coral reef for their shelter as a place to hide or even a place to hunt and a place to come and raise their babies. The last animal that we have to discuss is probably the most well-known animal for building a shelter and that is a beaver. Beavers are incredible at construction. A lot of people think that they live in their dam. They do not. They build this big, long dam to block the flow of water down streams or rivers, and then it creates this pond, and in the pond is where they build their lodge. Their lodge is their shelter. That's where they store food and raise their babies and survive the cold winters. So their lodge is their shelter. But the best and coolest thing about a beaver's shelter, their lodge, they can't make it without a dam. And that dam, when it creates that pond, completely changes the ecosystem. And sometimes this really benefits other species. Birds might use the dam to nest on. Frogs might use the dam as a new place for them to come and lay their eggs. Animals like otters might also come and use the pond as their shelter. So beavers, because they have to build the dam to make their shelter actually contribute shelters to tons of other species that live in their environment. A beaver's shelter alters the entire ecosystem. While we know that shelters are incredibly important both for us and for wildlife, now we also know that shelters can massively impact the entire ecosystem as a whole. How cool is that? So now I challenge you guys to think about what types of animals live in your environment, what types of shelters they might create, and then if you're feeling wild, go try to find an example of an animal shelter out in nature. And if you wanna continue learning about animal homes, be sure to check out our website. We've got activities and quizzes and projects and all sorts of good stuff on our Educating Adventures website. The link is below. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and we will see you guys next time for our next Educating Adventure.